Hello everyone, welcome back to the lab and also welcome to another new episode of Road to World 2024 where I will be documenting my journey, my grind of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG and eventually or hopefully make to the Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championship of 2024. Uh, that being said, let's start another new episode. I know I haven't been really updating for uh, over a week um, because I was away for several some several big events. The Undisputed UDS, which the or I call it the Ultimate Duelist, uh, the Ultimate UDS event happened uh, the weekend before in Los Angeles in Konami's headquarters, which I very fortunately attended as one of the UDS winner in the past. And also there is the past weekend uh, YS, uh, for the team YCS Las Vegas, which I also attended with two of my Chinese uh, teammates from the Chinese Discord. And a lot of people during these past two weekends have been <laughs> asking my list from the UDS, my thoughts on the format, so on and so far. Um, and I've been kind of saving everything uh, until right now, until I'm finally get to make a video uh, talking about it. So that being said, um, let's hop into the list really quick. As you see on the screen right now, this is my UDS list which uh, if you haven't, well, you might see me playing it on two streams during that weekend. Uh, one around four against Ryan with Flunder and then the other one was the final round against Jesse. How, let, let's say going into this event with everyone in mind that this is going to be a tier zero format, I was underprepared. Um, but it's also fair to say I really didn't have any data or any insights to be prepared. Like, it, it's very hard to figure out a winning strategy to a tier zero format prior to a tournament. And so this is at the end of what I went with. Um, there are definitely a lot of things I've changed since then, but there are definitely a lot of cool things um, I choose at the end. Let's just start with some basics, like the Snake Eye Stain, um, or let's just start with even the more bigger picture. I choose f Pure Snake Eye over Fire King Snake Eye. Why? Because throughout my testing, a lot of time, uh, Joel, had, Joel was one of the biggest problems. Uh, while I was testing Fire King Snake Eye. Draw, whenever a single draw happened from my opponent, ignoring any other hand trap with draw, I'm forced to play pure Snake Eye, even with a Fire King build, because the Fire King cards are no longer accessible under draw. And this just made me feel the Fire King cards are very, very clunky in, like, the, the entire deck. Uh... From the data we knew from OCG, Fire King Snake Eye was slightly better, slightly more dominating than Pure Snake Eye. Why? Because OCG, despite there are people meaning draw, if not at least citing draw, uh, Maxi is still the, the biggest hand trap in the OCG format, where the Fire King cards are really big bodies, really efficient summons under Maxi, which make the Fire King cards a lot better to fit the OCG format. However, in TCG, we don't have Maxi. So everything just changes. In here, at the very beginning, uh, the first few weeks of, of me testing, I think Droll was the biggest hand trap, um, the biggest opponent I had to face. And Fire King cards, with Droll being the biggest opponent, almost became a liability in the deck than anything helping extending or helping whatever grind game. Like, I need to be able to survive turn one, maybe even turn three to even have a grind game, right? Where the Fire King cards actually shines. So at the end, I went with a pure Snake Eye variant. However, this is also slightly different than, quote-unquote, the standard Snake Eye or pure Snake Eye variant people see online with just Synchros and, uh, like, the Synchros. For example, Formula Synchro, Boral Savage Dragon, and Baron. Why did I not choose those cards and Jet? 
obviously Jet is a phenomenal card, being a level one fire, being one monster by itself, but two link bodies. It's a it's a decent card. However, I really like Super Bali as a card. It's arguably one of my favorite card of all time. And I think with the inclusion of Earth Golem, this is a very solid ball breaker. Um, while I was anticipating, like while I was preparing for the format. So I could not justify myself fitting three synchros in my extra deck where I would if I could find even find those spaces, I would rather replace those three synchros with some fusions, the super poly targets. So that was at the very beginning my thoughts. And but as you even see here, I ended with still not be able to fit those into my extra deck. Uh there are some of uncommon picks for the extra deck that like not that has not been played in anyone else's extra deck, which I'm I'm going to talk about it one by one. And at the end, after having those, I the most I can do to include Super Poly in my whole deck is actually play them in the side along with the Super Poly itself and the Super Poly targets. Um so that was one of the idea. Um, that's how I kind of approached the format. I, could, I couldn't figure out which way will be better. Either board breaking or hand trap down or a combination of both. So at the end, I picked the best of both, which now looking back to it, most likely a mistake. I think just betting on either one could potentially result in me better. But having a bit of both, but not being the best at either, potentially resulted in me not doing that well or as well as I expected. Um, so I guess talking about the non-engine, Joel obviously, like I mentioned, is one of the biggest thing in my opinion. Um, because Fire King looks looked like to be more popular than Pure, which I was right about that. However, the other hand trap. Um, Imperm obviously is good, it also works as a 6 card, it's also part of board breaking, so it's a bit of both, so I max it out. Ash, on the other hand, I waited over other hand traps. For the simple fact, I think because Fire King variant are more popular, my plan, my game plan against Fire King is to just Ash specifically original, cutting off their Fire King line, so I play a mirror match afterwards. And Nib, despite now looking back to it, it should it has to be a three off. It just arguably now the best hand trap. But when I was preparing it, like there are so many combos where you can kind of dodge Nib or delay Nib or just even make Nib kind of useless. And there are also um. Everyone, even the Fire King variants, picking up Divine Temple, making me think Nib was just almost of like a bait to run because everyone's so prepared for it. Um, now looking back to it, yeah, that's that's probably also just wrong. Um, Nib was definitely a lot better, especially paired with a, a higher, way higher amount of hand traps. So, a few of my losses were actually just like Nib Imperm, Nib Valor together that normally in the past we will think, oh, that's like, okay, it happens, it happens, you can't really dodge kind of kind of situation. But this format, it's like a very realistic, realistic consideration when you're building boards. So, that's like some of the non-engines hand traps. As you see, it, it, this is not a high amount of hand traps at all. Because I wasn't, I didn't know how the format really could be. Uh, if when I was testing, it felt enough because my opponents that I was testing with also didn't know how to play the deck like more optimal than they should be. So at the end, low like drawing one hand trap somehow just became enough, which in, in realistically at this point, looking back to it, it shouldn't have, it shouldn't be. And so that's, yeah, that's probably an oversight, but it happens. And then talking about the board breaker parts, because I still couldn't find spaces in my extra deck to fit the super party targets, 
I ended up playing the less like less optimal version of Super Poly, which is Droplet. Funny to say, I brick on Droplet more than I should. Um, but I also did resolve Droplet in some Q situation, even use it as like a way to dodging Imperm and Droll. Or not dodging Droll, but delaying Droll. So, it overall performed okay, just not as, as good as some other cards could be. And then Triple Tag, honestly, I... At one point, I completely cut the card. I, at the very beginning, thought the card was good or at least decent in the whole format. But it turned out a lot of people realize it. A lot of people start respecting it a lot more and start playing around it. To the point, Triple Tag just feel not as impactful. I still kept one copy because you see the cross outs in my side. There are games where I do have situation I want to or almost I need to cross out Triple Tag from my opponent preventing things being taken from my own board so at the end i like i told myself yes one copy of triple tag has to be included in somewhere out of the whole deck could be mean could be side at the end i just decided to mean it it's the solid card is the one of game ones usually it's it's good whenever but game two three also factoring anti-spell as a consideration this card just start like being a lot worse post siding so I guess these are the non engines. Looking back now, looking back to it, um, some of them are definitely on the right path. Some of them are not as accurate to the format. But what I really think that compensated me um, of my like lack of experience on the non engine portion is my engine portion of the deck. Parallel exceeds outperformed really, really well. Um, Almost, I'll say, a lot better than uh, at the very beginning I could imagine. There are, well, there were a lot of different variants of Snake Eyes existed uh, besides Pure and Fire King. And there was a version using, like, uh, Magician Souls with Werewolf, though. This guy with... What's the other one? This card. Right, this is also like a common idea just to have like level one turbo more access to uh, uh, your snake eye cars. I've even heard people call we're off to as like a budget bonfire sometimes. And there's another version using sky striker cards because widow anchor is a solid shark cannon is especially good against like grunix and what's called um, princess in the graveyard. And even use it as like a monster reborn from their graveyard could be good. So that's also another version of it. Both of them, like the draw with Werewolf though, in my opinion, loses a little bit too hard on against Ma um uh, not Maxi against Droll. Uh, and if I wanna, if I end up choosing an engine losing to Droll, I might as well choose, choose Fire King over Dam. So Magician Souls was dropped along with Werewolf though. Then the Sky Striker version lost to Anti Spell, which was also um, the biggest flood April sighting at the very beginning for the first week. Now, yeah, it it's no longer Anti Spell; it's um, and uh, it's Summon Limit. But at that point, during the first week or even prior to the first week, I didn't know and wasn't prepared for it. So Striker was like just Striker whole engine. Also being dropped because of Entire Spell. So that left with me with not many um, like sub-engines I could choose. And Parallel Exceeds End was falling to my eyes. This is a very, in my opinion, very efficient engine to run. It's also functions similar as a bonfire. How it works is like whenever most likely a Link Rebo being summoned, you drop parallel to where Link Rebo point to, summon another copy parallel. These two go into Infernal Flame Banshee. Banshee detach a material to either search a Pyro Monster or send a Pyro Monster from deck to graveyard. And this allows me this allowed me to add Poplar, or if I already trigger Poplar, I can just add Birch. Which these are providing similar amount of monsters. And after that, if Banshee 
has a banshee has a second effect where if this card is banished and I control a pyro monster, I get to special summon back. So it randomly made SP into a way to climb link bodies. I guess I can show you some quick setups here about just uh, Ash Pyro. Do not shuffle. This is probably an easier way to demonstrate this card. So, summon Ash, get pop. Pop effect, summons, then pop effect, grab like whatever, originally in the specific case. And then next, going link rebo, pop, bench yourself. Oh, wait, forgot to restart it. So here, pop and parallel for my chain. Uh, parallel get to summon. Pop go into bench. Then parallel summon another copy of self. These two going to like a banshee. Banshee because pop has been triggered already from this ash. I just grab a birch. In some specific situations, I've even like send oak to just. Trigger like a, a tr trigger flame bird later to so set up that way. And here, because Banshee has this random second of fat where it gets summoned when it gets banished, so what I can do here is link away Link Creeble and Banshee into SP. SP will activate because it has materials, fits the requirement, banish the Banshee, and Banshee will trigger. Because I left the pyro on the board. To summon myself. Suddenly I have enough monster to make an Appaloosa. But here I'm going to summon Birch first. And use these three to make an Apple. Uh, now. Uh, Ash effect. Some flame bird. Use original. Send the flame bird. Some oak. And uh, oak. Do one of them, Flamber, summon two, the other two, just flood the board with four monsters instantly. That's Link Rebo here, right? Yep. Uh, two of them make an IP, then IP and the third one make a princess, princess bring back Flamber. Number uh, bench the uh, either IP or SP honestly, and then now unlock the princess, unlock the firelock, link the princess to the last one into a phoenix calling to Appaloosa. This is a two card combo, and with a nightmare phoenix calling to Appaloosa. So this Appaloosa is immune to uh, destroy by battle, and then Flimberge will summon out the IP, and because. I used the first SP just now. That's the reason I run a second SP here just to make sure this place actually is does something. Technically, I can just not play the second SP and just bench the SP instead of IP, but then I lose the, the first of, uh, of that SP, which sometimes at the very beginning of testing, it had like I was only playing one and it was okay because this SP being uh, after being summoned. We're also calling to Phoenix, like here. So this SP also cannot die, which made it a lot harder to remove or play into than the unusual SP situation. And also, uh, Princess is in the graveyard, can be summoned popping Flimberg, and can also call into Phoenix, prevent a die from battle. And once, like, Flimber resolved, like, yeah, everything, all my follow ups is here. Also, original is here, right, as well. So this is like what I was mainly doing with Ash Pyro um, by itself. And this was a very solid combo, in, in my opinion. Fun fact, there's even another 
uh, another combo where it actually do enough damage under shifter with these two. Let's see. Uh, let's do this way. So let's say my opponent. Uh, we'll do it this way. Let's say my opponent star, um, like they shifter me, and then they put out like either a Robina or Eagolon and an Asha, which now this Robina Eagolon usually have like what six or eight hundred on the board, right? Or well, I need to do my turn with Ash Pelo. I can OTK through this. Uh, normal summon Ash. Ash grab Birch. Summon up Birch. Birch into Linkable. Trigger Parallel. Parallel triggers summon another one. These two into Banshee. And Banshee get Poplar. Uh, add. Trigger Poplar summon. And Poplar grab Temple to boost attack. Um, temple put whatever into the back. And then Link Rebo and Banshee into Dark. Banshee will trigger because it's it's being banished under shifter, summon itself. And also I randomly gain attack because there are all other monsters being banished because shifter. So it's at 21. Um, 21 minimum because these are guaranteed to be here. Now dark activate, grab the shifter. And this is apparently enough to do a case. Poplar beat over, assume that's an eagle in, or a Robina. This is exactly, oh, I think this is exactly 8850, um, with then minus the 800 little bird, or an empty board, which is enough to OTK. Under shifter. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this, this happened in one of my testing match against one of my flu player, um, and he just brick with only shifter, and I pushed through an empty board, and OTK was just ash pedal <laughs> so that's something that's also another merit um of parallel exceed i would just this i would just sad i did play against a flu on uds on the feature match but he didn't brick where he didn't brick game two and just set up like a standard um what's called standard uh flu board so i didn't win that game couldn't pull pull off this combo under uh, on the stream and then game three, let me see. Game three, I got shifter, but I because I had parallel, and parallel is like random, uh, just a crazy randomly good amount of monster on the board. So I ended up making Appaloosa plus IP under shifter with the help of parallel. So as you see, this engine definitely provided a lot of explosive power to the deck. Because nearly every single monster can trigger it, uh, in with the help of Link Rebo. and the other efficient part is as like a small sub engine, it doesn't have any bricks within it. It just three parallel with a copy of Banshee in the extra deck. Maybe oh, you can count the second SP as part of this whole engine, but run, having a second SP is like never a bad thing ever. And I guess the only bad situation is you draw two copy of parallel, but that's just like you, you have to face that kind of things. Worst case, it's another cost of DFL, right? So this is what I think compensated me a lot. Um, despite I have like a lack of experience with the non engine part, my in engine portion of the deck is really performing better than anyone else. And there are obviously the dramatic chase with Severia. Severia, if you've been watching episodes from this channel, you'll see I already like tried to use it last format in Rescue Days. This also was performing decently well in general due testing because at the beginning, like triple tag was very a very popular choice, like day zero almost. And this negating triple tag can be game breaking. Having this in my back row alive make me 
or allowed me to just appalooza whatever I want and not worry about the consequences after. So that was the idea and um, pretty much the main deck. Uh, extra deck. <laughs> As you see, there are also some uh, unusual cards. There's a package of Boro and Dragon and Pentastack. Let's start with one by one. Boro and uh, it says, cannot be destroyed by battle card effect. Also, neither monster can target this with monster effects. This alone, just a lot of people don't have outs to it. The only realistic in engine out is um, Subversion, which some people played it. I thought about a card in general, but it turned out like Entire Spell was such a big problem, so I just didn't even consider it. But some other people definitely did, which uh, is technically an out to it. But overall, besides this part, besides this card specifically, the only really engine out is like what maybe some people play typhon maybe some people played under a goddess those are at this point very unpopular picks in my opinion and uh, besides that just non-engine outs like droplet super power tactics uh nibiru imperm that's it so if let's say in a game situation where all the non-engines has been traded away and they don't necessarily play like a random extra deck, like either Goddess or um, Typhon. Usually people have no outs to it. But this is not the way I use the card. It's not supposed to be sitting there as a tower-like thing that my opponent could, couldn't touch it. The best thing about this card is this monster can attack all monster my opponent controls once each. The last of I require Rocket Monster in the graveyard, so yeah, it's not happening in this deck. Um... But, so in mirror match, or in snake guy version kind of mirror matches, usually people either make a big Appaloosa with everything, which at that point, just try to either out it, out the Appaloosa or force the Appaloosa, then OTK was the standard Atlantis reading Phoenix. However, there's the other way of playing, setting up board and doing opponent's turn, is spread the whole board with little guys, just the Flamberg Gravy effect. Um, at that point, it's very impossible to, first of all, clear everything. Second of all, survive under whatever those little guys grab, like either the, another copy of Ash, another copy of or Origin, uh, by the Flimberge flowing effect. In those situations, even if I out the whole board, it's very unlikely I win afterwards. Because if I can't kill their follow up, just crazy, and then destroy whatever I can do. And Boro in prevented that. What's the best way to not worry about my opponent's follow-up? Just make sure they are dead, that they don't get their turn before they, they, can, they, can, they can die with their follow-up holding in hand. That's the best way to prevent it. And Borland beats over everything. It's 35, it's naturally big, and it attack everything. So if I drop it, I like 3-4 monsters, that's like guarantee OTK just with Borland. But if they have everything in defense, now here's the Pentastack. Pentastack says if my linked monster pierce. Linked means either pointing to something or be pointed by something. Which in this link heavy extra deck, it's nearly guaranteed to set it up like that. And also, I mean, Boran just opens the arrows in like all different ways that it can. So it, being linked isn't as, as hard. Um, and also, Link Rebo technically does block Boran in some ways. But usually Princess will be summoned as an interruption midway. And Princess herself will prevent Link Creeble being summoned. So I actually had summoned Boro in more often than I thought. Um, sometimes just perform an OTK that my opponent just don't see it coming. Sometimes just, oh, this is the last resort. All I can do is just make a big guy. I hope my opponent couldn't touch it. I mean, all, all I need is one more turn of them not dealing it with it, and I get another turn back, and my power is able to come back afterwards. So, I will say these two cards, uh, despite I didn't get to use it on feature, against either Ryan or Jesse, but I was summoning Borean nearly every single other round when I was not on feature, um, doing the UDS. 
And I also, in case anyone not know, I won my UDS in beginning of 2020 with specifically Dragolink. So imagine how hype it would be if I, out of anyone else, summoned Boro and Dragon in my Snake Eye deck on, at the UDS on feature match. How crazy would that be, right? <laughs> so at the end, I was like, even if I, even if I have some other conclusion resulting this card being not as necessary, I'm going to play it just for the potential hype. So I went for it. Unfortunately, Jesse Jesse gave me uh, some uh, some like worst possible opening hints throughout my entire months of testing, made me not able to summon this. Uh, but it definitely have, have won me a lot of games. So I'm I'm not regretting playing these packages. Uh, Pentastat also randomly became like a thing that I can easily summon. I can just burn. Uh, it's like a dark. Uh, it's like a dark generic link to randomly access to like a dark. Or just open arrows for a parallel exceed. So I also have some of Pentastat just to burn it as a link to randomly. Um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much the extra deck. Rest of these are very generic that you probably see in every other Snake Eye decks, so extra deck. So um, the rest of them I probably don't need to explain it. And that's pretty much it, the whole main and then extra side deck. A gave four time, uh, super power targets as I mentioned, shifter because we don't know how many like random cash guy or flu guy could be, um, and along with the cross out because cross out going first is definitely one of the best, and cosmic is like just standard generic good thing, uh, really hard fire king also I was well a bit too scared against anti spell so this is also an an out anti spell, so that's pretty much how the whole, whole deck is. Do I like this list? No. What was the problem of me? Um, I will say I prepared the UDS and YCS Vegas, well, the team YCS Las Vegas together as like a whole thing. But realistically, because UDS is such a small meta with only 16 people, some of the strategy I could just go for a little a little bit more like one side will be even fine compared to this version at the end focusing both hand trap and bull breaker at the same time and it's not doing either well. And might even to be able to say if I see shifter deck I just auto lose to it, but in trade of some better um mirror match edge. So this shifter could potentially just not needed in at the uds but more as a thing for the vegas however since i prepare all those together i made the deck really all rounded for both of them which ender is not being the optimal choice for uds i will say if those two tournaments swapped around we had the, we had team wises first and then the uds i'll probably have like a lot better performance at the uds uh say this way so this is the whole list for the UDS, the, the pros and cons. And let me show the updated list here, which is technically the list I use for Weiss's Vegas the weekend after. Throughout the, this whole week between Vegas and, well, between UDS and Vegas, I was kind of almost desperate. I know my deck was not as good uh, at the UDS. So our end of this, shout out to Pac, Walter, uh, Christian Arena for pretty much building the list uh, with me together. We met on Thursday at Vegas and we just went to a hotel. Pac pulled out his, uh, his winning list from Costa Rica. Um, I was the one technically even filmed the deck profile. And then after that, we just start pretty much working on it for how uh, we change or even for me build a whole list for Vegas. And this is what they came up with. The idea was just hand trap as much as they can, hand trap people down. Um, honestly, if they play through, if my opponent play through the hand traps I can have, they probably would just win. 
but the difficulty is very high with they at the beginning they had 15 hand traps in the main i said what if we just go even higher so at the end they went for a 40 card list around like 16 to 18 hand traps and uh jet over parallel i pretty much took the whole idea replaced the jet portion with the parallel package and bump it to like 42 as the number i preferred and that become how i like how this list at the end so the idea is simple with the max amount of starter uh ash diabelle at this point even parallel bonfire uh or um wanted and i mean original is like half of it there are a good amount of starter to see at least one per uh, per opening hand and the rest of the those spaces hand traps um obviously there are hand traps are like some of them being good some of them being bad in my opinion now i can give you a better tier list knowing the results from two major events nib is definitely the best hand trap it's the best hand trap to even go first with because in order for my opponent to break the board they they most likely will almost they almost have to summon five and nib just hard punishing or it's not punishing at this point it's just hard nuke the board for me to play a follow-up after and then followed by that it's imperm um imp or imperm and valor negations are now just in, in my opinion the best hand trap after nib they pair very well with nib um so like nib valor nib imperm was also just one of the deadliest combo that i lost to during the previous weekend and now i'm now i'm kind of almost abusing it nib and valor like shutting down um how my opponent start either being an ash or diabelle and force them to like have um like extended after that then i can trade them with like my other hand trap and also imperm slightly better because it works as a six card to draw even going to uh, an established board so nib and imperm, imperm in my opinion are the second and best uh, second and third best hand trap the third one's actually tricky. It's both Mourner and Joel. Joel has been performing a lot worse. Um, not because the number of Fire King decreased. In fact, the number of Fire King potentially like maintain the same. Joel is just like a bit easy to play into it because even the Fire King version, they are reducing the number of Fire King cards in the whole deck. And play more he like a lot heavier, similar to a pure snake guy. Where a pure snake guy realistically only need to search twice: once from Ash, once from Poplar. And if you do draw some specific, like if you draw an original or a tempo, you don't even need the search of Poplar um, half of the time. So draw has been performing a lot worse. You will, you can even see some of the results from Vegas, where uh, a lot of people just don't even have max amount of draw in their main deck but overall if i'm going with just a crazy amount of uh, overwhelming amount of hand trap draw is definitely still good to pair with other thing more on the other hand it's another negation and negations are in generally good um however it doesn't work on a normal some ash so that's why mourner is slightly worse but it works against the uh the about another like all the extra deck some like occasionally it works against like half on the SP and that's being summoned from IP in your turn. Uh, so it, it has its merit. Um, Mourner is also slightly worse because this is a hard one per turn and the Niter Valor Imperm is. So Mourner is like next slightly here. Then it's actually Ash. Ash being a fire is really a like a detrimental thing in this fire it's fire centric format and ash also just feels like not doing enough um ash a normal summon ash <laughs> oh it's kind of weird to even say that ash on a normal summon ash they still keep the second effect which might just be might just result ash not like ash blossom not hit not doing enough damage to the board and also having an ash blossom in the graveyard allow them allow my opponent to just turn one heater uh, randomly increasing amount of links link material on the board also a bad thing also um whenever 
you can delay the use of Valor Imperm, just scouting out what your opponent's hand is sometimes and still get similar kind of effects. But Ash Blossom, you almost cannot do that. There are very finite amount of cards you can hit with Ash Blossom to the point like if they if your opponent starts with original you kind of have to ash it right but you don't know what's, what could be coming after and so ash overall has been just dropping in my eyes quite a bit it's probably even say if i'm not playing uh overwhelmed amount of hand trap i might just even cut ash completely and bell's the other card bell still technically even below ash because if bell hits even less of uh, less amount of cards Bell also, but Bell is decently to pair with other things and some do it has something that like other cards cannot specifically like Flamebird's Grave Effect or sometimes it just become like another copy of other hand trap like Bell is an Ash when it's being used unwanted Bell is like a Veiler when it's being used against like Charmers so overall it's like at the end it, it's more just to be here to increase the amount when i have a good uh quantity i think the individual quality matters a little bit less so overall i choose i went with 18. um also being said um ash bell mourner those being level threes doesn't really work with parallel i thought about playing Almirage, turned out just not really couldn't fit in the extra deck um these compared to the level ones being valor and troll these ones are significantly worse as a level threes. Also, they all three of them are hard once per turn. Draw is technically quote unquote once per turn, but having double draw sometimes punishes your opponent having like delayed wanted. Um, so it can do some work. But these like draw, drawing two copies of it just feels sad. And that's also why Iron was going with two 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 for Ash Bell Ash Bell Mourner instead of three Ash three Mourner inside of the Bell. Um, that's pretty much the idea. Parallel, obviously, I like the car a lot from the UDS. So I kept it um, over Justin Chrome compared to like what Pack and G played. Um, so that's that's it. Um, what's the other? Oh, during the actual main event, I was actually playing one for one over the second copy of original. Uh, after the main event, after <laughs> after I lost to Hani for the, during the final round. Um, after I was out of the tournament, the second original replaced the one for one. There has been games where I needed the second original because in the grind game where going turn one, I don't set up all the wing board. I set up like the biggest board with the best amount of resources. And then at turn three or turn four, where I do want to have a second copy of original in the deck for my poplars to grab to really set up more things. Uh, without me drawing wanted, there's no way to put the to put the first original back to the deck, and I don't see wanted at all. Not often, not as often as like Diabelle or other starters. So that's why I like second copy of wanted. Um, at the end, just like replace the one for one in my list after I'm uh, after I done the tournament. Funny enough, I entered the side event right after just to just to play more games. And my first run, I played the Cash Tira, his Rice Heart. Randomly hit my original, which uh, I was very glad at because I threw in the second copy right before that. So yeah, that's uh, the main deck. Uh, 42 cards, 18 hand traps. I think the odds of me seeing at least one hand trap is like 95 some percent. Uh, if I if I cut it down to 40 with the same amount, it only increased to I think 96-ish percent. And then I think the the odds of me seeing like what two more hand trap was like what six sixty some seventy something overall it's not uh, so I would say like forty two cards is okay and the extra that being team the same and there's not a single card I change compared to my UDS list um I will say I'm very satisfied with this extra deck having two SP because now how I play is just slowly grinding two SP is really good in like a slow grind game. Um, because my opponent only have one. Once they losing it, they they no longer able to do anything with SP. So yeah, and also just if I do go for combo to going first with parallel, the second copy is actually needed. Then the side deck. 
So there are things similar, there are things different. The similar thing is like the cross out still there as a cop with a copy of triple tag and then copy of call by with a shifter. This package is just so good going first. It covers nearly everything. Uh, I mean, a lot of people, it's not old thing. A lot of people are familiar with it now. Call by, why is it not in the main? Based on what, quote unquote, from Christian Arena, the idea of the main deck is to just hand trample people down. Which, in this situation, call by is almost a ball breaker going second. Which is not fitting the idea of the main deck. This even applied to some other hand traps, specifically like Ghost Ogre. Because if you do run Ghost Ogre, you kind of use it as a ball breaker instead of a hand trap. You're using it like to, to hit IP on Appalooza. Which in this situation is a ball breaker. That's also why it's... Not the idea for the main deck, which better as a side deck going first, siding into it. And uh, uh, I know they did not play any time cards, um, at least when I left the room, when they were still working on it. I don't think they played any side, uh, time cards. I disagree with it. They're, unless the goal, unless the game goes super well for me, like just whenever I go first, they could have hand trapped me down, then they go first, I I hand trap them down. And only in those kind of games, I won't have time issues. For me, I definitely think in a regular average hand from both players, you will most likely enter time or get close to time. And also, I just want to have this because I know other people will use it and I need this as a cross out target. So at the end, I just place uh, Dogwood. Funny to say, I lost some of my matches in the UDS because I did not have Dogwood, and I think I had a cross up, I couldn't cross it out. Uh, it, at the Vegas YCS, somehow I was just drawing better, so I barely entered time. But I also, I still do glad, I don't regret running this card. There are also games where I was holding this, but I was, my ball was good enough that I didn't need to use it. Um, I definitely had witnessed uh, a lot more dogwood being used either by my teammates who's on sim same same or similar list or <laughs> their opponents. So overall, I think this car it's just a necessary evil at this point. This whole game had to run it, and then the floodgate summer limit now has been proving as the better floodgate compared to anti spell. It's like Hani also run it, uh, won the tournament with it, also used it on my teammates when our team played against them in the final round of Swiss. So yeah, this proving this is just a better uh, better going first card. Whereas one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight cards going first that nearly say almost all to win the game. I think this is like a fair amount of thing. Um, when, whenever I'm going first, I just set out a lot of like duplicates, copies of hand trap, like Ash, Bell, Warner, Valor, Valor, Imperm, Imperm, and then depends on matchup. If they have Fire King, I keep draws. If they don't have Fire King, it's more pure. I even set out draws and putting like maybe more negates back. Sometimes I just say I don't really care about a mortar. I just take out a mortar completely because I wouldn't even care about crossing it out. That happens. Nib is like almost never coming out of the deck. Um, just because it's so powerful even going first. And then going second overall, oh, it's like, I think I'll, I personally still respecting people playing anti-spell. Like me and my teammates had like some hidden codes where if they started post-side games, saw anti-spell or some limit first, we'll have a code share within our within our team. So we know if I do see some limit, I keep all my bonfires. If I if I do see, or if my teammates see anti-spell, then I'll even side out a bonfire with, uh, doing the tournament will be one for one, but uh, it will be the same for the second copy of original in this situation. And then sometimes if I need to board in more because time cards, I'll even side out like a copy of Diabell because it's kind of bad drawing multiple or like, or playing to board. Uh, ra very rarely siding out a third copy of Parallel. Um, I do think because it does take an extra deck, uh, also, this card is powerful, so I, I do like to keep all three, but sometimes when time is getting close, I need more side spaces, I might take one out. So, it's overall, like, these are the side pattern. I barely ever side out the second Flamberg. I, I think, I've never done that, 
And I think the first day, the first time I do this, I'll most likely getting punished for not having a second one. So I don't have never really ever done this. Um, what else? Oh, the two B still. Uh, I don't remember if Pack actually ended his playing that. Um, they at least when I left the room, they had one of each B still. Mag, Julius, uh, Sanrier, and Boldrick for the voiceless matchup. I I think at this point, now knowing it, they probably saved those spaces for Lullaby at the end. Um, but I, when I left the room, the idea of Lullaby hasn't even come out yet. So um, I just played it, um, like in my side as an out to as, as a card against voice. Now looking back to yeah, this these probably not even need it. It's cool. Magnuma can't even grab Flingbird. Flingbird is a dragon, <laughs> but haven't drawn Mag at all, so it didn't matter. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the whole list from Vegas. Um, I do like it. I like it a lot. Hand Trap has definitely been performing much better for me during Vegas compared to the weekend prior at the UDS. Um, my personal record was nearly undefeated throughout the entire Swiss. I think I dropped I dropped a match against Chris LeBlanc in the final round, who uh, who ended with winning the event. And then I think besides that, I barely even dropped any games. Um, there are definitely some good players that played like Tommy Tommy Rao, um, like the uh, from Patrick Coben's team, and um. I won with a fairly good hand very easily through that match. For it was a it was a mirror, and overall, yeah, I do like this list. As you see, I already made changes. I took out a one for one for original, and with that kind of reasons, and um, so overall, yeah, this will be the list. Um, there are definitely more combos I kind of want to cover, um, which but this video has almost get to an hour long so i'm gonna end it here and probably gonna post another episode maybe just to specifically showing the combos but that's how that has to be after i'm getting back home i'm still currently at vegas waiting for my flight in a few hours i'm still in the hotel room recording it maybe during middle or later this week when i'm getting when i'm getting home when i have my setup for remote i'll probably show some combos under the camera and then have like a whole video dedicated to just combos. So, that being said, if you uh, have anything, any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. And uh, if you like this video, please uh, subscribe to the channel, share it to your friends, let other people know um, about us. And uh, that being said, I'll see everyone in the next episode. Goodbye.